Hi, I'm Will from Tested. I'm Adam Savage. Uh, we are here today because you're going to teach. Well, you're learning how to do something. Yeah, I'm not teaching a darn thing. You're not thing. teaching anything. No, we are. We are. We can call this learning how to do dovetails with Adam Savage because Adam Savage is also learning how to do dovetails. <laughs> so, so this is kind of to show you decided you want to learn how to do dovetails for a project that you're working on. Well, a, a few weeks ago, we we featured my master and commander outfit, and that got me kind of all hot and bothered about all kinds of Napoleonic era. British naval stuff. Okay. And I started thinking about a sea chest, right? Everybody needs a sea chest. Everybody needs a sea chest. Whenever these guys would go out, they had all their belongings, all their critical yeah. belongings in a sea chest. And that was lashed up and went wherever you so went. It's a big chest for what I assume is like one change of clothes and some rum. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, but all your personal effects that you would be traveling with for like three years. Oh, so it's not like you dump it in storage no, and then you no, come no, back. No. Well, no, but you also you want to write letters to your loved okay, ones. You okay. want to have some money so you can spend it at the ports. Uh, the rum is actually, you don't need to store it yourself because you get an allotment of like 12 ounces a day of rum. They, why, why don't we do this now? I don't know. They drank ridiculous amounts of alcohol it back fights then. Fights the scurvy, right? No, not at all. They <laughs> actually, to fight the scurvy, they'd mix lime juice in with the rum. Oh, that's perfect. That would be the way to make you drink your, your fruit juice. Why would you not drink the lime right. juice with the rum? Okay, so dovetailing. So I got into the idea of doing a sea chest, and I started looking at them, and I thought, I should just make this. I'm, a not, I'm not a terrible carpenter, and they're generally dovetailed. A dovetailed is a joint. It is it, angled so that when you join the joint dry, it doesn't let go. With glue, this is one of the strongest joints for wood you can get. So it's two trap trapezoids that are cut different ways into the into the wood, right? You cut it you cut a trapezoid plug out of one side and then a, a yeah, a, a void to receive it on the other. Okay. Seems um, pretty straightforward. It is pretty straightforward. I have been finding that it's kicking my butt to make them look pretty. Okay. So I've so, been watching YouTube videos, I've been reading material about it. This is my first one. It's absolutely abysmal. My second one, less abysmal but still loosey goosey all over the place. Mm -hmm. My third one Pretty much just as bad as the first one, although a little tighter. So let's see what you've learned. So that's so what I'm doing. So okay, so what I've learned is that you first mark, okay. So these you, are two pieces of wood. Two pieces of soft wood. This is pine. Okay. And I've learned that the angle that you cut your dovetails at matters depending on whether it's hardwood and softwood. And with your hardwood, you want steeper angles. With your softwood, you want a less steep angle. I am going to do this with both the unfinished faces on the outside, that's called the show side, and it matters that you know where that is, I've discovered. If you pay attention to where that is, you actually have some slop you could play with. Okay. Right, because if you cut this and you think that the other side's the show side, and you're, the, ang the side you're cutting on is really precise, but it's a little off on the back side. Oh yeah. See, there's room back here on the inside you of can, these. You can wiggle a little. Yeah, there's a lot of wiggle okay. room, but on the outside, you don't want any wiggle room. Okay, so Very we are going to, this is me not knowing how to do something live. Okay, so you don't use a pencil either. You use a scribing tool to okay, scribe. So you mark the inside line on Mark the sides. inside and the outside so okay. that you know. I'm also making this slightly proud. I'm making this line slightly deeper than the width of this wood so that I can shave it down later. Okay, just in case you, you to, to finish, to hone it in more? From what I understand, that's standard practice. You actually okay. should plane it in, but I don't have a good plane right now. I'm going to do a single Dovetail. So this is one big dovetail. One here. big dovetail. Okay. I don't know if so, people will see that at home, but there's little scores just in the top edge of that of that wood. Yes, just a right little there. mark that gives me a very accurate mark. Okay, so I'm going to cut from the show side. Now, uh, here's my dovetail marking gauge that gives me a one to eight angle. Okay. And I'm going to, let's see, how am I going to do this? I want to measure it in just a just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to. So first you're going to measure where the center of your of your yeah, dovetails are? I, well, I, the... it's a good question. I, I, I'm making this up as I go along. This is the learning part of the... Well, I mean, but the thing is, the way you learn this in the old days is you'd apprentice with somebody for for a period of time, and they'd teach you how to do each of these things as you right. could. Right, and they would make you do, like, you know, a thousand of them, and then they would rate, you know, rate you able to do it. Okay, so now I've made my little marks there. Okay. Um, I am going to... So this is just a razor saw, or like coping, it's not a coping saw. This is a razor saw. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna. So this part's pretty straightforward. It is pretty straightforward. I've already managed to go off my angle a bit. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. Now there, I've held to the angle pretty nicely, and I've gone down to my score line on both sides. All right. I'm quite sure there's going to be plenty of mail about this with advice. 
You know what? I'm just gonna cut this on the band saw. Yeah, make of course. It really why precise. not? Give me a sec. There is one side of the dovetail. Okay, that looked really easy. <laughs> so these are some incredibly sharp chisels, I assume. These are, yeah, these are really beautiful sharp chisels that uh, from Lai Nielsen that I've gotten, and they're lovely, lovely, beautiful things to work with. Okay, so there's my first dovetail. Now I want to mark this. I want to mark this shape on the piece of wood that will receive it. Oh. And once I mark that and cut that out, so you're making a plan. I sh yes, and they should, they should meet. Let me just see that this is square. So what you're going to end up with a, is a three-dimensional join that only removes one way and is really strong on the on the other exactly on any kind of twisting or, or or compression. Exactly. Yeah. Seems really straightforward. I, I could have said it better myself. All right, I'm going to bring this up right to the edge there, and. Yeah, and then I'm going to mark it. There we go. And you're just going to cut down to the marked line that you did before. Yep, same okay. thing. Cutting down to the same marked line and then... If my cutting is good... Right. Okay. That's always the question. You can't just take this and put it on the bandsaw. No, that's where this comes in. Ah. This is my brand new, really beautiful coping saw. Um, it's made by New Concepts, K-N-E-W. Wow, it is really light. It is made of titanium, it's really light. It's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, now I'm going to... Uh, Okay, so that's where I ran into trouble before, trying to follow the exact razor saw line. So, this seems like it might be the hard part. I don't want to judge. I, <laughs> I think it is the hard part. Okay, I'm going to come in here like this, okay. and I'm going to follow oh, you, just, my, you just turn the corner. Uh-huh. And that's what the coping saw allows you to do is to... Okay, don't screw me going below the line there. Okay. Well, are you controlling the saw, or is the saw controlling you, Adam? Well... Welcome to my world. <laughs> All right, here we go. And then you just go back and do the other side. Mm -hmm. this, this looks very easy. Are you sure this is the fourth one? This is, uh, yeah, this is the fourth one. There's a, we're watching, it's not gonna, this isn't gonna be pretty when we're done, I oh, okay. promise you. I, I'm impressed so far. All right, so there's that. Now, there is cleaning it up. Okay. And which so back to your super sharp chisel. Back to the super sharp chisel. So pull this out. Now I'm. I can see I've gone below the line there, which means that's going to look really ugly there. But but it's on the inside part. Oh, it's on the no. Show this side. is on the show yeah. side. So I'm I'm going to get something I don't like out of this. Now we're getting somewhere. This is looking a little bit nicer. Now, what I've also noticed is that I think that dovetailers tend to cut this little cut on a little bit of a cheated angle so that... You mean the corner cut? Yeah. So that they, they cheat it towards the inside so that the show side ends up matching really nicely. Mm. So I'm going to try and cut it a little bit, a little bit at less than a 90 degree angle so that I can get the same result. All right, and what are you doing to that nice table, Adam? It's not that nice a table, it's really old. Well, this is the point of having a, a workbench table, mm -hmm. right? Yes, all right. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So far. Okay, so let's see here. Um, now, the moment of truth is well, that they... We need a drum roll, please. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so they're supposed to go together like that, and... Voila! Yeah, that's not bad. That, that there's, looks... a, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of, see, there's a lot of slop there. So, I mean, couldn't you just file off this side and call it a day? I certainly could, but okay, here, so let's take okay. a look. Come on over here to the... Back to the bandsaw? Nope. This disc sander, it's a 16-inch, 220-volt disc sander. It's one of my all-time favorite tools. It allows you to remove ridiculous amounts of, of wood in powder form at, at a time. So here we go.
All right, so if you look closely, what you can see is that the, my, the angle precision is pretty good on these cuts, but they're still... It just looks a little too too big. There's a little bit too much play, right? Yeah, and the fact is is that if it's properly sized, you should need a mallet to pop those two pieces uh, together. But, but typically, you'd also have multiple multiple dovetails on one edge, so that could add to it as well, right? It certainly could. In fact, the plans for the sea chest that I'm that I'm going to build have like ten dovetails on each side. It's like <laughs> like mind blowing. So, well, the know, router's right over there. If you give up. Mm -mm. I'm okay. going to learn this by hand. I, 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 I must have the hand-eye coordination to be able to get a dovetail down. I, That's I, my assumption. I have no doubt. Well, thank you so much, Adam. And uh, we'll back for more from the cave uh, next time flint napping. <laughs> no flint napping, but I, I'm glad we got to, uh, 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 to watch uh, something less than facile in action because yeah. that's most of what I do here in the shop is do things I don't know how to do and kind of putter along at them until I get it right. Always learning. Yeah. That's the key. We'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.